today I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, support experience about Proxy SQL and ExtraDB cluster. And I want to show you a little bit uh, how you can use these features, uh, how you can expand your high availability and everything on your production environment. I can see some folks from Brazil in the chat. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, those who doesn't know, I'm from Brazil, and it's a pleasure to to see them around here. So uh, let me introduce uh, those. I see that some folks does not use Percona software on the poll. Uh, Percona was founded in 2006. Uh, we have been serving MySQL now for more than 14 years if my math is correct so we have been serving customers around the world uh, of different types uh, from small scale and to huge clusters and all sorts of uh, uh, requirements and me in particular i work on support um, dealing with this case. So I usually have the, from I, I answer tickets from the simplest questions until the most uh, complex ones. Uh, I'm still not sure uh, if everyone can hear me. Uh, if you guys from organization can send a, a, a thumbs up on the chat. Um, now, a little bit about me. Thanks, Hene. Uh, Again, I'm a support engineer for Percona uh, almost for three years now. Uh, I've been working in, with MySQL. Sorry, this is a bit outdated. Now it's been around 80 years. Um, I'm a bit old already. Um, I also work with MongoDB as well on support team. This is my social media in case you want to contact me. Again, like uh, for you guys, you can see uh, myself and Stacy, Rene, we are on the MySQL channel. We are also on LinkedIn. So anytime that you have some question or something like that, you can leave on the forums, social media. I will be glad to answer and I will try to do it as fast as I can. So uh, let me try to explain a bit extra about ExtraDB cluster. For those who already know it, it uh, may sound a little bit repet repetitive, but uh, I will try to make it faster and at the same time uh, make the ones that doesn't know know a bit about PXC. Uh, when we are talking about uh, MySQL, uh, the first step when we are thinking ensuring high availability, not high availability, is we try to build a slave. So we start, we start creating slaves so we can execute backups on the slave or in case the master crashes or anything like that, we have a spare server. So in a situation of disaster and recovery, we can do it fast. When we are talking about extra DB cluster, uh, specifically Galera, it's the technology that is being used under the hood. This is the next step. So your environment is becoming more critical and you want to leverage the high availability of your data, you start thinking to a solution. It can be group replication that Oracle released a few, uh, with MySQL 5.7 and it's present on MySQL 8, or Galera cluster that was uh, that's being developed by Coldership and now is present on Maria and also on Percona flavor as well, known as PX, uh, PXC. So uh, what is the main difference? Uh, when we are, uh, main difference, when we are talking about MySQL replication, uh, we are, uh, it's the classic asynchronous replication. So you might have issues uh, with the switchover. For example, the switchover is not totally transparent. You can't, uh, keep executing transactions uh, in a fashion way. Uh, and if the master crashes, you need to restart on the slave. It's also a single point of failure. 
uh, especially because it's asynchronous. Uh, you can, you may lose some data, although uh, nowadays there are some a few tweaks that you can do on the replication that can ensure more consistency. But again, uh, the fundamental thing here is that the traditional MySQL replication is a sync. So if you consider the worst disaster, uh, you may lose some data. Now, uh, when we are talking about uh, Galera, uh, all nodes uh, act as a master. By this, uh, I mean, if you execute a update on a row, before the, the client, the, the application receives the, the commit, okay, all nodes have certified it. So you execute an update, all three on this situation, all three nodes will say, okay, I received the update and I can run it. So it's another level uh, of uh, integrity. Of course, uh, this is not for free. So when we, talk, when we are talking about security, high availability, there is always a drawback, uh, which is generally performance. Most of the times are performance. So SSL, it's performance. High availability, it's performance. Uh, another advantage of PXC uh, is the fact that you can spin new nodes in a kind of automatic way. So if one node goes down or you need to add another node to the cluster, this is transparent. Uh, the Galera cluster has the, uh, uh, on the background, has process like SST and, IS, and IST. So the node can recover without disrupting the application. Uh, it, it, it's easier for the management management side. So this brings a, a huge benefit. And you can linear scale reads. Uh, this is a, a, another huge advantage. So if you need the application is requesting more reads and the three nodes are not able to keep up, you just spin another one. Proxy SQL is able to detect it. I'm going to show an example later. Uh, so it scales very well for reads. Uh, one small observation here, uh, Proxy SQL, uh, no, sorry, PXC or any cluster that I'm aware of uh, is not right, uh, does, is not, does not scale well for writes, all right? So this is because uh, you need to have control of your writes to avoid conflicts and transaction aborts and everything like that. So in case someone tries to sell you a Galera solution saying that you can have multiple writers, uh, it does not work very well like that, okay? Uh, you may receive writes in different nodes, but the performance is not going to improve. Even with proxy SQL, like you, uh, this is a problem, not a problem, it's a design, uh, it's a design of the software, so that's the way it works. And as I was saying, so uh, there is, uh, Galera can work, uh, can handle the workload conflict and the first commit wins. So if you're performing update, the same update for multiple nodes, the first one that Galera certifies is the one that will receive the okay and the other ones will be aborted. And the application, if it's writing on multiple nodes, it will have to handle this. And Particularly, I, this is why I like ProxySQL because ProxySQL uh, makes this uh, writing, the halting the writes and the reads really transparent. So you don't need to worry uh, if, if it's a read, how I'm going to treat this on the application or anything like that. Just leave this work for ProxySQL and it, it will be handled. Uh, Another th important thing, another important feature from, from PXC is the fact that uh, it supports flow control. So uh, if one of the nodes, uh, let's say, I do not recommend it, but let's say that you have one of the nodes that has 
fewer resources, like less CPU or memory, this node will fall, will fall behind. And Galera itself has a mechanism to avoid the node falling behind or giving up from him. Uh, again, this is not recommended. Uh, we recommend to have all the, all the nodes working with the same resources. Uh, uh, PXC also provides uh, another interesting feature is that if you are trying to execute something that is not supported by the tool, uh, it allows you to use the PXC strict mode. Uh, for example, uh, my eyes and engine, it's uh, kind of deprecated the engine, uh, it's not transactional, you can lose data there. It, it, it has more, nowadays it has more problems than solutions and PXC does not allow you to work with this. So it provides you some safety in case some command uh, may be harmful. Uh, PXC offers this option as well. Now, uh, the main, like when we are talking about leveraging uh, high availability, we are migrating from master slave to PXC. So we have now your database is, is high available. You have three nodes running, different data centers. Uh, it's the dream of the DBAs. Uh, and now what comes next? Um, the application needs to be high available and the, the proxy needs to be high available. And this is where it comes proxy SQL because uh, I need to perform a maintenance on one of the nodes, like I need to, let's say, I, I'm under the P, uh, PCI rules, so I need to upgrade my operating system. It's easier for you to take one node out, Proxy SQL will understand that, the other nodes will keep up with the workload of the application. You finish your maintenance, brings back the node, everything keeps flowing. It's uh, I'm not selling dreams, but it is really uh, close to, this is the reality now. So it's it's really beneficial to have both things uh, working on your environment. And again, uh, 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 the thing that I really enjoy, it's the flexibility that Proxy SQL has because it's a, a rich load balancer. So um, if we're using a, a load balancer from, from AWS, I forgot the name now, that is just a route robin. It will keep pinging the port of MySQL and if the T306 is available, the, it will route queries for there. And it's not very smart. So maybe you want to have a dedicated node for, for writing, which is the, the most, it's the wisest thing to do. And you want to scale reads on the other nodes. So this can be done uh, with proxy SQL. I'm going to show how on the next slides. Uh, so I don't have the intention here to discuss much about performance or any tweaks. We had the CEO speaking about it uh, before, and I'm sure that he can answer the questions better than me. So I will try to show what we can see from practical terms. And if we have any, any questions, I will try to answer otherwise, uh, and they can, can answer it. Uh, as Henry said before, uh, there are a lot of features that uh, Proxy SQL has, and uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, nowadays Percona officially recommends Proxy SQL instead of HA Proxy, for example. Why? Uh, of course, we have a closed development, but these features that we can see, like carry, question, carry caching, which is totally different from the query question, caching that we, we see in MySQL, please don't mix them. Uh, and I may, may tell this later, like it's totally different. It's a real cache, it's effective, so it's much better. Query routing, uh, which is like, I want to have dedicated nodes for reads. Suppose that you have a ETL job to run every day. You can put this user to run on a dedicated node. You can have FIDO, 
as I said, advanced configuration, you can take down your node for maintenance and bring it back. Uh, and now, uh, now not, uh, it's been a while that it's all, all been working. Proxy SQL now supports clusterization. So it's not a single point of failure anymore. You can have a, a cluster of Proxy SQL working behind. And of course it's open source. So if you have any questions, uh, you can just go and look at the code and see how the things work. And you can even try to compile by yourself for fun, whatever. Uh, Rene mentioned before, but there are some topologies. I saw some questions here uh, that you can use. Uh, on this particular example, I'm showing the proxy SQL running with the application server. Uh, you can have another type of uh, topology, which is proxy SQL in the middle in a dedicated server. Uh, the intention for it uh, is to avoid, let's say, nowadays uh, people has, customer have a, a container, a, a farm of application. So it might get difficult to customize the proxy SQL for every single container. So you can have a proxy SQL in the middle, so it will make things easier for you. And on this situation, uh, reads, uh, as we can see the red arrows, our reads are going to the slave servers and the write queries are going to the master server. Uh, this is another example, as I mentioned, proxy SQLs in the middle. We have the three servers here. And finally, we are talking about uh, the cluster. So we have the cluster running, a PXC cluster with proxy SQL and the application running. So you have a single IP, it, it can be a load balancer or the IP of the proxy SQL itself. Um, the new feature uh, that is really interesting here. Uh, it's this native support for for Galera clustering. So now Proxy SQL has dedicated tables for it. So you don't need to use external script to control Proxy SQL. It means that managing things are on, on the same place and it's secured uh, by the Proxy SQL database. So this is an example I'm going to quickly uh, show because I want to show the demo as well. So this is an example of deployment of the configuration. You have three nodes, you have dedicated the host groups uh, for each situation, for writing, reading, for backup. And when you want to take your nodes offline, that you have a dedicated host group for this as well. Uh, I'm not using proxy SQL admin in this example because it's really automated. I'm showing if you want to use uh, proxy SQL itself, it's really friendly. Uh, you just need to pinpoint the IPs of the servers and the servers will, will be detected by proxy SQL. You need to create the users for the application on PXC side in proxy SQL. Uh, it's a really common a uh, mistake that when we are starting working with proxy SQL in Galera, you create the user on PXC and proxy SQL does not have it or the opposite and the connection does not does not you don't you don't connect to it and it's frustrating and but it's a, a simple thing. The rules they are not mandatory but this is where I would say that one of the magics uh, happens because on, using rules you can create the most set different uh, rules for workloads direct uh, redirect reads writes and do whatever you want so this is where like i would say that the magic happens uh, and this is the galera settings which you want to say who is the writer host group reader uh, backup and some small settings uh, I'm not going to cover all of them here because there is a, a lot. And if you have any questions, just send it and I'll try to answer. It's important uh, to set the correct proxy SQL version when you are 
uh, trying to communicate proxyql and mysql so they they can use the same uh, aversion to talk uh, usually uh, i it's really hard uh, i i didn't see much problem when you use different settings but it's not wise to use it uh, minor versions i i never saw any problem but for sure if you if your cluster is 5.7 and this is configured to 5.6 you might hit some issues uh, this is the monitor user the monitor user is important to detect if the node is up in running or if it's down so it can manage the the nodes uh, wisely and this is an example uh, i'm not going to cover it here rene also mentioned uh the proxy SQL being log reader, this is to avoid uh, reading uh, stale reads. So if you wrote what, some data on the writer and the read is, is trying to read, uh, this feature ensures you that you're reading the most recent data in case the application needs to enforce it. And it's really powerful. Um, it uses just a bit of the network it requires ETID to run, and it's really efficient. Uh, this is how to install. Uh, I want to jump this part and show the lab. Let me see, sharing. I hope you guys can see my screen. I'm going to raise a little bit of the, so we are still connected, look good. So this is my proxy SQL. Uh, and it uh, already explained that you have two interfaces. By default, the 60332 is the admin interface. So here you have the whole set of tables that my SQL, that proxy SQL has. So these are all proxy SQL, all right? Uh, and if I want to check if, what are the current status of my servers? Oh, this is users. Um, runtime, my SQL servers. So I have three nodes running, all of them are online and all of them are receiving reads and writes. I have the rules to redirect reads and writes. So for those who are interested in seeing the magic happens, so as we can see, I'm running some query uh, on the, the Port that is where the application needs to connect, which is where the, the queries are halted. So I'm running a basically select a host name. So the query goes to the server uh, and asks what is your host name and brings back. And as we can see here, we already got one of the queries went to node two and one of the queries went to node three. So in this situation, like you have, if you have two nodes, receiving reads uh your read is split in not exactly but it's around 50 percent each of balance so it's it, it really benefits from uh scaling reads it's really nice um, another thing that i want to mention uh, now is uh i want to show you the case i'm going to run a sysbench for those who does not know sysbench is a tool that performs uh, benchmarks in general. So if you want to test something, you can use Sysbench. On this situation, I'm connecting to proxy SQL and I want to run uh, a workload. So oh, let me remove the comment. I'm running the query and now we can see we have reads, writes uh, running the total transactions per second is around between 50 and, and 65, which is nice. 
if I query again my runtime service, all of them are online. And on this last terminal that I have, I have one of my nodes running. So this is my node running. And of course, I don't want to make things easier. I'm going to say that I didn't test this before. So if it fails, I will end up the session. <laughs> But I'm going to kill one of my nodes and see what happens. I'm literally doing a Q minus nine. I'm not going soft. So let's see what happens. I just kill it. Uh, this is the exporter. So one of my nodes stopped answering. This is a little bit bad for me. And if we see, okay, one of the nodes went on the shunned state, which is what I expected, but not what I expected previously with Sysbench. Okay, I need to debug a little bit more. <laughs> uh, probably one of my host groups was not configured properly. Uh, I am seeing here that all of them is on the read group so probably this is the main issue uh, when i did the insert i forgot to set the writer host group but uh, it works uh, it was a personal mistake uh, and here it is running again uh, one thing that it's uh, so the node is, is is down and if i start again Let's wait a minute for Galera to recover the node. The workload is still running. I hope that I have enough uh, GCash to the node to recover, otherwise he will do a full stage transfer. Okay, so while it is recovering, um, the one thing that I want to show you guys, um, okay, the node went back, and if we see here, I need to restart the workload again. The node went back online. So it, it is automatically detected by proxy SQL. Uh, a little bit when we're talking about performance, uh, this is bench, uh, as we can see, is running around 58, uh, as I said before, between 50 and 60 transactions per second. Uh, mo most of us, like, what is the performance hit? Uh, it's not much. Uh, this example, that I have, oh, let me show. This is the Sysbench running connected straight to the cluster. And as we can see, the node needs to go back uh, to refresh. The, the heat on the performance is not that high. So you have some similar performance. Uh, on this aspect, I'm not doing uh, any tweak on the performance on the proxy SQL or the PXC side. So there is a lot of room to explore in terms of performance. But as we can see, the performance hit is, is not uh, huge. Uh, it's really feasible. So if you are starting your project and you are planning to introduce proxy SQL, uh, you will see that the costs are not that high. Um, one thing extra that I want to show, um, going back to my e slides, as Henry mentioned, is the integration with PMM. So here we are able to, let me put a smaller small range. So here we are we are able to monitor what is happening with proxy SQL uh, using PMM. So you have a, a much more uh, beautiful interface instead of creating the status 
uh, of ProxySQL straight to the admin interface. So you can monitor client connections, uh, the number of active backend connections per node, and the issues that we have, as we can see here, uh, when I try to shut down the node. So you can see this as well. Um, and you have a sort of like, if the nodes are online, offline, which host group they, they belong, uh, the halting. So you have a set of features and memory, everything that we as Percona consider really important for the customer and for those who actively use proxy SQL that you need to debug. So uh, for example, if you have any issue with proxy SQL and you are a Percona customer, you have PMM, these are the metrics that we generally request for, for the customer. Um, this is the whole package, right? So uh, this is what we consider the ideal scenario, uh, having proxy SQL, uh, PXC running uh, on, on, on cluster mode, and you have PMM monitoring behind it. All those technologies are completely open source. They do not have uh, any enterprise feature behind it. So for those for those who does not know Percona, we we do not we does not work uh, on the similar way as Red Hat or, or Oracle, which we sell enterprise software. No, we only sell professional services and support. So you are free to use the whole potential of all the tools. Uh, if you uh, if you guys are interested, uh, I, I put a GitHub here. So using this, you are able to spin a PXC, a PMM, and proxy SQL running on different hosts. Uh, this presentation I hosted on DigitalOcean. So you can set your virtual machines, test before uh, deploying to your production. Uh, does not do like me, as I said, I deployed all my instructions and during the presentation, the connection failed. So uh, do not make, do what I say and do not what I do. Uh, that's, that's the lesson that I want to leave you guys. I think this is it, what I wanted to present. So let me see if you guys have any questions. Um, and uh, we can discuss. So um, I'm, I'm looking bottom up, uh, how can we connect proxy SQL to PMM? Uh, as Renee mentioned, there, there are exporters, you use uh, guys, you use exporter to do it. PMM itself has your own exporter, so you install PMM client on the proxy SQL server, you set the exporter, and then uh, the exporter will send the metrics to PMM. This is the same for all the components that PMM monitors. Uh, do we need to run Galera Checker? So, uh, do we need to run Galera Checker demo with scheduler or does it run automatically? This is the main difference from Proxy SQL 1.4 from Proxy SQL 2.0. Uh, uh, Proxy SQL 2.0, as I said, has native support, so you don't need to have an external script as Galera Checker. If you are using Galera 1.4, you need to have the Galera Checker. Uh, next question, uh, and by the way, Rene, if I'm saying anything wrong or unclear, uh, you can always correct me later. Um, next question, would you recommend three PXC data nodes or two data plus one GarbyD? Uh, GarbyD, for those who does not know, is an arbiter. Uh, it's similar to what Mongo has. The arbiter does not store data. Uh, it, but on the other hand, uh, all transactions that are happening on the cluster, the arbiter is aware of. So uh, if you're planning to deploy an arbiter, you need to take in consideration the arbiter for performance purpose. Uh, this is up to you. 
uh, we've seen um, two uh, cl uh, two nodes with data and one arbiter. Uh, it more de it depends more of like if you have only two data centers and you're hosting your cluster there, it, it does not matter too much because uh, the data center that holds two nodes will always have priority in case of a split brain situation. If you are talking about performance, I would suggest three nodes. Uh, does ProxySQL monitor the arbiter? Uh, yes, it monitors, but of course you don't have all the metrics uh, available as uh, the data node. And could you please elaborate more on the native integration? Uh, yes, uh, I will leave the specific details to René. I think he can handle this better. I'm not sure if René can join me, so we can like discuss this together. But if René, if you can, just let me know. Otherwise, I don't know if I need to mute myself. Can you hear me? Um, yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay, so I, I can basically answer to this question. Um, so, <clears throat> so basically, the way it works, the native integration between Proxy SQL and PXC, uh, is that now the configuration is goes on. Uh, oh, my screen, oh, so now, um, instead of configuring uh, the scheduler and having an external script be executed to monitor in the cluster. What you do is that you configure this table called MySQL Galera host group, and there you configure which one is the brighter host group, which one is the brighter backup host group, the reader host group, and the, and the offline host group. And based on this, Proxy SQL will start uh, uh, monitoring checks on all the servers in those host groups. And the checks it does is not only if the server is alive, because this would be a very too trivial check, but we will also check all the variables related to status variables related to Galera and PXC. And based on those status variables, we determine if the server is healthy, if it is serving traffic, if it is doing um, I, I, um, state transfer, and for example, if it's doing state transfer, it avoids using the server for either reads and writes, and basically try to determine which are the healthy server to send traffic to. And in a nutshell, that's, that's it, basically. It, it's checked a series of status variables, and based on the output of those status variables, it determined um, the status of the, of the node. Yeah, mostly this. Okay, I think there is another one that it's better for you. Uh, is does Proxy SQL monitor the arbitrator node of uh, Galera? Um, you can, of course, configure Proxy SQL to monitor the arbitrator, but you should not do it because Proxy SQL, when it monitored bug the, those servers, it actually checked the status variable of this of those server. So it actually need to be a server, uh, a SQL server, because otherwise it cannot monitor it. Uh, so if you just put the arbitrator there, as possible, is not able to run those queries against it. You just assume that the arbitrator is in a bad state. The server, the backend server, is in a bad state, so it will not be able to send traffic to it, and actually should not send traffic to it. Okay, I got one here. Uh, cross data center PXC configuration issues, if any. Uh, I don't like the, the main issue is latency. So if you, as I said before, if you have only two uh, data centers during a split brain situation, it's it's a problem because uh, it's only two. So you don't have enough votes to decide who is available or not. But this is a, a problem of uh, any high availability option. Usually the idea is to have at least three three zones three availability zones if you are talking about AWS. Uh, and if you are using proxy SQL uh, from production perspective, I would recommend you to have at least one proxy SQL per data center. Otherwise, um, if you lose communication, your proxy SQL is on the other side of the bridge, uh, it's pointless. Uh, 
All right, I think we got another question here. It's a huge question. So you said that PXC in one, one data center you are replicating to another one. And what kind of uh, replication are you using? Like PXC is master and you have another cluster that is slave. This is my understanding. Um, so uh, this architecture, it's a little bit uh, problematic. Uh, uh, there are some, there are a lot of things that you need to take care of. Basically, because uh, if you're going to do this, I would recommend using GTID for better control. You need to enable GTID on all nodes of DC1 and DC2. Uh, I never did the configuration like this on ProxySQL using two clusters being master and slave. I think Hene can talk better about this. Uh, I have the tweaks from the point of view of MySQL. Um, if the node, if one of the cluster goes down and you need to uh, restart, uh, if you're using GTID uh, and you have the binary logs, uh, the the slave will detect the gap and will apply, but I'm not sure. Maybe Henry can talk better about proxy SQL. And then the normal recommendation there is to have uh, proxy SQL configured as having two clusters. So the cluster in the uh, local DC and another cluster in the remote DC, but to not perform an automatic failover from one cluster to another one. Um, that's is what I normally recommend. So to have them both configured, but not perform any automatic failover between the two. Uh, okay, so there is a, another question from the same guy. Uh, so you mean enabling uh, binary logs on all nodes? Yes. Uh, otherwise, if the, the nodes that has binary logs crash and the replication needs to catch from it, you will not be able to. So yes, you need to enable from, from all of them. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions. So I think it's with Hene and Stacy. Uh, I just want to say thank you for Hene to be here talking a bit from a little bit about the use of proxy SQL from the user perspective. So I, I'm a huge fan from it. Uh, uh, I think it's really powerful and it really uses the entire uh, availability that prox uh, that Galera has to offer. So I'm, I'm a fan of the two. Um, thanks for the chance to be here. Uh, it was an honor to be close to the CEO of ProxySQL. I never met him in person, so I'm grateful for this. And it's with you guys. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Really appreciate it. Yes, and um, very exciting the fact that uh, how ProxySQL uh, and Percona PXC operate together. And yes, because PXC is able to provide the HA and ProxySQL is basically managing the, the traffic uh, side to end. <laughs>